Now, while we're talking about battery charging, um, there are different states of battery charging. So when we first turn on our battery charger, we're going to go into bulk charging. So whether it's the solar panels, you know, and the sun just came up that morning, or whether it's an AC generator that's turned on through and going through an inverter charger to the batteries, whatever that charger is, whether it's the charge controller on the solar panels or the charger inside the inverter, it is going to follow these charging stages. So when you first get power to your batteries and the batteries are kind of low, it goes into what's called a bulk stage. And during that bulk stage, the battery voltage is increased until you get it to the point where you want it to be. And we'll talk about voltages in a minute. But so you'll slowly increase your battery voltage during the, during the bulk stage. And your amps come out really, really fast. You immediately, from the very beginning, ramp up to a very high amp rating on how much current you're putting into your batteries. And then when the battery voltage gets to what you set it at, what you want it to be at for the bulk and absorption stages, it levels off and stays at that level. And now we're in absorption stage. So as soon as I hit the voltage, my, my voltage that I've set, I go from bulk charging to absorption charging. And absorption charging is where the most of the power ends up inside the batteries. Usually the absorption phase of the charging is going to last at least two hours um, and sometimes all day. So that's the, uh, the long, slow charging process. So my voltage was increased during the bulk stage till I got it to the point I wanted it at and then it stays at that point through the whole absorption stage. And my current, my amps, remember at the bulk stage it ramped up to really high amps really fast and stayed at that high amperage until my volts hit where they want. And during the absorption stage it starts off as a high amps uh, charge and then it slowly, slowly ramps down to a lower amp charge. And then when my batteries are totally full and the charging process is pretty much done, my charger is going to go into what's called the float stage. And the float stage is really just a trickle charge that keeps the batteries topped off. And as soon as you use some of the power from the batteries, a good charger will realize that that's happened and go back into the bulk stage and start the process over again. Some chargers have to be restarted manually, but that's pretty rare these days. Most charging, most charging uh, equipment goes into the float stage automatically, and then when you use some of the power out of the batteries, it goes back into the bulk stage. So during the float stage, your voltage drops down to what you've set the float voltage at, and it'll drop down to that point and keep it at that point. And then your current is just going to be a very small amount of current. So you're just feeding a few amps into that, uh, into that battery just to keep it topped off. So you could stay in the float stage for forever, basically, and it's never going to overcharge your battery and if you don't use any power, it'll never switch back into bulk charging. It'll just stay in that float stage and keep your batteries topped off. Now, we're talking about battery voltage, and this is the actual voltages. And this gets a little confusing, so just bear with me, and we'll continue to talk about this as we go through the, uh, through the course. But first of all, typical battery voltages are going to be 12 volts, 24 volts, and 48 volts. And we call that the nominal battery voltage. And you'll see why in just a minute. But so typically we're going to have a 12 volt, 24 volt, or 48 bat volt battery bank. And all of these numbers are just, the 12 volt numbers are multiplied by 2 to get the 24 volt numbers. And the 12 volt numbers are multiplied by 4 to get the 48 volt numbers. I only remember the 12 volt numbers, and then I multiply them out if I need to know 24 volt or 48 volt. Um, it's just easier for me to only memorize one set of numbers. Whatever works for you, but these are the, the battery voltages that we're talking about. So a battery that I'm going to call a nominal 12-volt battery, which is a pretty standard deep cycle battery, uh, when that battery is full, and I say no load and no charge for a reason, so nothing's going on with the battery, I've got no power being taken out of it, no power being put into it. If the 12-volt battery is full, it's going to read 12.7 volts on a voltmeter, which this is why we say it's a nominal 12-volt battery, because a 12-volt battery usually isn't 12 volts. It's something a little higher than that. So the full battery is 12.7. If it's a 24 volt system, it's 25.4. 48 volt system is 50.8. Again, that's just these numbers multiplied out. Now, the next one is we have the low battery. So again, if there's no load and no charge on the battery, and it's really, really almost empty, down to that point where it's going to start to get damaged if I continue to discharge it, 
it's going to be giving me about 12 volts on our voltmeter. So when you have a 12 volt battery and it says it's 12 volts, that's not a good thing. That battery is almost dead and you need to charge it before you can use much power out of it. And again, we're just going to multiply these numbers out and for the 24 volt and the 48 volt battery banks. So those are the voltages for full and low. Now, the bulk and absorption charge is typically going to be about 14 and a half volts on a 12 volt battery. And that's going to vary a little bit from type to type. Typically, the sealed batteries want to be a little bit lower than the open vent flooded batteries. But a lot of times, the battery manufacturer will tell you exactly what number to put in here. But in all honesty, it's going to be somewhere between probably 14.3 and 14.7. There really isn't a huge amount of variance from one battery to another. So that's the bulk and absorption charge, and it's going to be 14.5 volts. So a much higher voltage than what it's at naturally without being charged. And then that float charge, that final charge stage, where all we're doing is just keeping a nice, low, steady trickle charge on the battery. On a 12-volt battery, a typical float charge is going to be about 13.5 volts. And then we have our equalizing charge. And remember, we only want to do the equalizing when we're dealing with the open vented flooded batteries and we're giving it a really, really high charge, a really high voltage charge to boil the electrolyte inside the batteries to correct our issues, the so sulfation stratification issues. So equalizing charge is going to be 15.5 volts. So it's a much higher voltage than even the bulk charge is. And then this is the part that really blows everybody's mind, but we'll explain it more when we get more into the, uh, the solar specs. But the required solar voltage to charge a 12 volt battery bank is 18 volts. So the minimum output of a solar panel to charge a 12 volt battery bank is going to be 18 volts. And it'll make sense when we explain it um, in terms of the, the output of solar panels. But if I see a solar panel that has a, an, uh, an operating current or operating voltage, excuse me, of 18 volts, I will call it a nominal 12 volt solar panel. And we don't refer to solar panels that much anymore that way, but when I first started in this business, it was nominal 12-volt panels and nominal 24-volt panels. And nowadays, there's a lot of panels that are in between those ratings, and the reasons for it we'll get into when we start talking about the, the, the details of the specifications on grid tie inverters and solar panels. But just keep in mind, if you want to charge a 12-volt battery bank, you will need an 18-volt solar panel to do it, at least. It can be higher than that if you've got the right kind of charge controller, but we'll talk about that as well. So those are the basic voltages. Now, when I talked about the battery being full or low with these numbers, I said that that's with no load and no charge. And the reason for that is if the battery is under load, if you have appliances and equipment and lights and things running off of that battery, it's going to read an artificially low voltage. So if I really want to know where my batteries are, I really want to know how much charge I have in them, and I don't have a fancy battery monitor, and I have to rely solely on putting my voltmeter on the batteries and seeing what I have, then I'm going to make sure I take off all my loads and turn them off, because the loads are going to bring down the battery voltage, and it's going to show me a lower voltage. So the loads are going to make the voltage lower. And then I say no charge on these, because when the battery is being charged, the voltage is going to show is higher. Because, for example, when it's in the, the bulk absorption charge phase, it could be all the way up to 14.5 volts. And if it's in the float charge, it's going to be 13.5 volts. Now, if I know it's at, now, if it's at 13.5 volts and it's being charged, I have actually one of two scenarios that it could be. So I still don't know exactly what's going on. Because if I see 13.5 volts on a battery that's 12 volts, and I know it's being charged, it could be the float charge, which means the battery is completely full and the charger is just keeping it topped off. Or I could be in the early stages of the bulk charge and say my battery started off nice and low at 12 volts. I turned on my charger, and the first thing it's doing is bringing up that battery voltage. So that 13.5 volts could be just you know on the way to the 14.5 volts that I have set for my absorption charge. So I don't know until I look at my charger and see what stage it's in, or I turn off my charger and see how many volts I have coming out of my battery with the, uh, the charger on. And again, all of these voltages are going to vary a little bit depending on battery type, but they're going to be within you know, a couple points of each other. You know, it's, it, you know, your bulk charge on a sealed battery might be 14.3 instead of 14.5 or something like that. But for the most part, these numbers are pretty standard.